The breakup of Yugoslavia occurred as a result of a series of political upheavals and conflicts during the early 1990s. After a period of political crisis in 1980s, constituent republics of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia split apart, but the unsolved issues caused bitter inter-ethnic Yugoslav wars. The wars primarily affected Bosnia and Croatia. After the communist victory in World War II, Yugoslavia was set up as a federation of six republics, with borders drawn along ethnic and historical lines. Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro and Macedonia. In addition, two autonomous provinces were established within Serbia, Vojvodina and Kosovo. Each of the republics had its own branch of the League of Communists of Yugoslavia party and a ruling elite, and any tensions were solved on the federal level. The Yugoslav model of state organization, as well as of middle way, between planned and liberal economy, had been a relative success, and the country experienced a period of strong economic growth and relative political stability up to the 1980s, under the firm rule of President for Life Josip Broz Tito. After his death in 1980, the weakened system of federal government was left unable to cope with rising economic and political challenges. In the 1980s, Kosovo Albanians started to demand that their autonomous province be granted the status of a constituent republic. Starting with the 1981 protests, ethnic tensions between Albanians and Kosovo Serbs remained high over the whole decade, which resulted in homogenization of Serbs across Yugoslavia who increasingly saw the high autonomy of provinces and an effective system of consensus at the federal level as an obstacle for Serbian interests. In 1987, Slobodan Milosevic came to power in Serbia and through a series of populist moves acquired de facto control over Kosovo, Vojvodina and Montenegro, garnering a high level of support among Serbs for his centralist policies. Milosevic was met with opposition by party leaders of Western republics of Slovenia and Croatia, who also advocated greater democratization of the country in line with the weakening of communism in Eastern Europe. The League of Communists of Yugoslavia dissolved in 1990 along federal lines. During 1990, the communists lost power to separatist parties in the first multi-party elections held across the country, except in Serbia and Montenegro, where they were won by Milosevic and his allies. Nationalist rhetoric on all sides became increasingly heated. In 1991, one-by-one one republics proclaimed independence, but the status of Serb minorities outside Serbia was left unsolved. After a string of inter-ethnic incidents, the Yugoslav wars ensued, first in Croatia and then, most severely, in multi-ethnic Bosnia and Herzegovina. The wars left long-term economic and political damage in the region. Background. Yugoslavia occupied a significant portion of the Balkan Peninsula, including a strip of land on the east coast of the Adriatic Sea, stretching southward from the Bay of Trieste in central Europe to the mouth of Bojana as well as Lake Prespa inland, and eastward as far as the Iron Gates on the Danube and Midzor in the Balkan Mountains, thus including a large part of southeast Europe, a region with a history of ethnic conflict. The important elements that fostered the discord involved contemporary and historical factors, including the formation of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, the first breakup and subsequent inter-ethnic and political wars and genocide during World War II, ideas of Greater Serbia, Greater Croatia. Greater Albania and conflicting views about pan-slavism. Before World War II, major tensions arose from the first. Monarchist Yugoslavia's multi-ethnic makeup and relative political and demographic domination of the Serbs. Fundamental to the tensions were the different concepts of the new state. The Croats and Slovenes envisaged a federal model where they would enjoy greater autonomy than they had as a separate crown land under Austria-Hungary. 
Under Austria-Hungary, both Slovenes and Croats enjoyed autonomy with free hands only in education, law, religion, and 45% of taxes. The Serbs tended to view the territories as a just reward for their support of the Allies in World War I and the new state as an extension of the Kingdom of Serbia. Tensions between the Croats and Serbs often erupted into open conflict with the Serb-dominated security structure or exercising oppression during elections and the assassination in national parliament of Croat political leaders, including Stjepan Radek, who opposed the Serbian monarch's absolutism. The assassination and human rights abuses were a subject of concern for the Human Rights League and precipitated voices of protest from intellectuals including Albert Einstein. It was in this environment of oppression that the radical insurgent group, the Ustays, were formed. During World War II, the country's tensions were exploited by the occupying Axis forces, which established a Croat puppet state spanning much of present-day Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Axis powers installed the Ustays as the leaders of the independent state of Croatia. The Ustays resolved that the Serbian minority were a fifth column of Serbian expansionism and pursued a policy of persecution against the Serbs. The policy dictated that one-third of the Serbian minority were to be killed, one-third expelled, and one-third converted to Catholicism and assimilated as Croats. Conversely, the Chetniks pursued their own campaign of persecution in parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina and Sandak for the Molajevic plan and the orders issues by Drazimir Hilovic which included t he cleansing of all nation understandings and fighting. Both Croats and Muslims were recruited as soldiers by the SS. At the same time, former royalist General Milan Nedic was installed by the Axis as head of the puppet government and local Serbs were recruited into the Gestapo and the Serbian Volunteer Corps. Both Quislings were confronted and eventually defeated by the communist-led, anti-fascist partisan movement composed of members of all ethnic groups in the area, leading to the formation of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. The official Yugoslav post-war estimate of victims in Yugoslavia during World War II was 1,704,000. Subsequent data gathering in the 1980s by historians Vladimir Zerjavik and Bogo Lubkokovic showed that the actual number of dead was about 1 million. Of that number, 330,000 to 390,000 ethnic Serbs perished from all causes in Croatia and Bosnia. Yugoslavia was in its heyday a regional industrial power and an economic success. From 1960 to 1980, annual gross domestic product growth averaged 6.1%, medical care was free, literacy was 91%, and life expectancy was 72 years. Yugoslavia was a unique state, straddling both the East and West. Moreover, its president, Josip Broz Tito, was one of the fundamental founders of the Third World, or Group of 77, which acted as an alternative to the superpowers. More importantly, Yugoslavia acted as a buffer state between the West and the Soviet Union and also prevented the USSR from getting a toehold on the Mediterranean Sea. The central government's control began to be loosened due to increasing nationalist grievances and the Communist Party's wish to support national self-determination. This resulted in Kosovo being turned into an autonomous region of Serbia, legislated by the 1974 constitution. This constitution broke down powers between the capital and the autonomous regions in Vojvodina and Kosovo. Despite the federal structure of the new Yugoslavia, there was still tension between the federalists, primarily Croats and Slovenes who argued for greater autonomy, and unitarists, primarily Serbs. The struggle would occur in cycles of protests for greater individual and national rights and subsequent repression. The 1974 constitution was an attempt to short-circuit this pattern by entrenching the federal model and formalizing national rights. The loosened control basically turned Yugoslavia into a de facto confederacy, 
which also placed pressure on the legitimacy of the regime within the federation. Since the late 1970s a widening gap of economic resources between the developed and underdeveloped regions of Yugoslavia severely deteriorated the federation's unity. The most developed republics, Croatia and Slovenia, rejected attempts to limit their autonomy as provided in the 1974 constitution. Public opinion in Slovenia in 1987 saw better economic opportunity and independence from Yugoslavia than within it. There were also places that saw no economic benefit from being in Yugoslavia, for example, the autonomous province of Kosovo was poorly developed and per capita GDP fell from 47% of the Yugoslav average in the immediate post-war period to 27% by the 1980s. It highlighted the vast differences in the quality of life in the different republics. Economic growth was kirked due to Western trade barriers combined with the 1973 oil crisis. Yugoslavia subsequently fell into heavy IMF debt due to the large number of international monetary fund loans taken out by the regime. As a condition of receiving loans, the IMF demanded the market liberalization of Yugoslavia. By 1981, Yugoslavia had incurred $19.9 billion in foreign debt. Another concern was the unemployment rate, at 1 million by 1980. This problem was compounded by the general unproductiveness of the South, which not only added to Yugoslavia's economic woes, but also irritated Slovenia and Croatia further. Causes Structural problems The SFI Yugoslavia was a conglomeration of eight federated entities, roughly divided along ethnic lines, including six republics, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Republic of Macedonia, Montenegro and Serbia, and two autonomous provinces within Serbia, Vojvodina and Kosovo. With the 1974 constitution, the office of president of Yugoslavia was replaced with the Yugoslav presidency, an eight-member collective head of state composed of representatives from six republics and, controversially, two autonomous provinces of the Socialist Republic of Serbia, Sap Kosovo and Sap Vojvodina. Since the SFR Yugoslav Federation was formed in 1945, the constituent Socialist Republic of Serbia included the two autonomous provinces of Sap Kosovo and Sap Vojvodina. With the 1974 constitution, the influence of the central government of senior Serbia over the provinces was greatly reduced, which gave them long-sought autonomy. The government of senior Serbia was restricted in making and carrying out decisions that would apply to the provinces. The provinces had a vote in the Yugoslav presidency, which was not always cast in favor of senior Serbia. In Serbia, there was great resentment towards these developments, which the nationalist elements of the public saw as the division of Serbia. The 1974 constitution not only exacerbated Serbian fears of a weak Serbia for a strong Yugoslavia, but also hit at the heart of Serbian national sentiment. A majority of Serbs see Kosovo as the cradle of the nation, and would not accept the possibility of losing it to the majority Albanian population. In an effort to ensure his legacy, Tito's 1974 constitution established a system of year-long presidencies. On a rotation basis out of the eight leaders of the republics and autonomous provinces, Tito's death would show that such short terms were highly ineffective. Essentially it left a power vacuum which was left open for most of the 1980s. Economic collapse and the international climate after the death of Tito with the rise of Mikhail Gorbachev, Perestroika and Glasnost in the Soviet Union. The West felt secure enough in the USSR's intentions that Yugoslavia was no longer of pivotal strategic importance. Despite Belgrade's non-alignment and its extensive trading relations with the European community and the US, the Reagan administration specifically targeted the Yugoslav economy in a secret-sensitive 1984 National Security Decision Directive NSDD 133, U.S. 
Policy towards Yugoslavia, a censored version declassified in 1990 elaborated on NSDD 54 on Eastern Europe, issued in 1982. The latter advocated expanded efforts to promote a quiet revolution to overthrow communist governments and parties, while reintegrating the countries of Eastern Europe into a market-oriented economy. The external status quo, which the Communist Party had depended upon to remain viable was thus beginning to disappear. Furthermore, the failure of communism all over Central and Eastern Europe once again brought Yugoslavia's inner contradictions, economic inefficiencies, and ethno-religious tensions to the surface. Yugoslavia's non-aligned status resulted in access to loans from both superpower blocs. This contact with the United States and the West opened up Yugoslavia's markets sooner than the rest of Central and Eastern Europe. The 1980s were a decade of Western economic ministrations. A decade of frugality resulted in growing frustration and resentment against both the Serbian ruling class and the minorities who were seen to benefit from government legislation. Real earnings in Yugoslavia fell by 25% from 1979 to 1985. By 1988 emigrant remittances to Yugoslavia totaled over $4.5 billion, and by 1989 remittances were $6.2 billion making up over 19% of the world's total. Death of Tito and the weakening of communism On 4 May 1980, Tito's death was announced through state broadcasts across Yugoslavia. Although not a liberal thinker, his death removed what many international political observers saw as Yugoslavia's main unifying force and subsequent ethnic tension started to grow in Yugoslavia. The crisis that emerged in Yugoslavia was connected with the weakening of the communist states in Eastern Europe towards the end of the Cold War, as symbolized by the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. In Yugoslavia, the National Communist Party, officially called the League of Communists of Yugoslavia, had lost its ideological potency. In 1986, the Serbian Academy of Sciences and Arts contributed significantly to the rise of nationalist sentiments, as it drafted the controversial Sarnu Memorandum protesting against the weakening of the Serbian central government. The problems in the Serbian autonomous province of Sap Kosovo between ethnic Serbs and Albanians grew exponentially. This, coupled with economic problems in Kosovo and Serbia as a whole, led to even greater Serbian resentment of the 1974 constitution. Kosovo Albanians started to demand that Kosovo be granted the status of a constituent republic beginning in the early 1980s, particularly with the 1981 protests in Kosovo. This was seen by the Serbian public as a devastating blow to Serb pride because of the historic links that Serbians held with Kosovo. It was viewed that that secession would be devastating to Kosovo Serbs. This, eventually, led to the repression of the Albanian majority in Kosovo. Better source needed. The more prosperous republics of senior Slovenia and senior Croatia wanted to move towards decentralization and democracy.